everybody, this is Bruce here. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Traveling with Bruce. Please subscribe to my channel today and become a key supporter of Traveling with Bruce by clicking the Patreon link. Enjoy the video. Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Today's video is for first time cruisers. If you've decided to go on your very first cruise ship vacation, I've got 10 tips for you that uh, will help you go a long way to enjoy it. You're going to have a great time and uh, you'll never forget your first cruise. I never forgot my first cruise and uh, uh, I've gone on many others since. Uh, they're just fantastic. Number one, number one thing is a few things to pack before you even get to the ship itself. Remember to pack uh, hats because <laughs> you're headed to probably a warm climate, especially if it's in the wintertime. If you head down to the Caribbean, you're going to be in brilliant sunshine for hours on end. And if you're going to take a short excursion, uh, even for a couple of hours, make sure you have headwear. Uh, don't get a sunburn on your head, your neck, or your shoulders. Number two, sunscreen. Bring sunscreen from home. Buy it at your local uh, uh, pharmacy or, or Walmart or wherever you shop. Get a good deal on it. Uh, it'll be cheaper in your hometown than, uh, than uh, on the cruise ship itself or at some of these ports of call because the, the ports of call know, oh, here come the tourists and some of them always forget to get their own sunscreen and it's 10 bucks a bottle. When at Walmart, it might be $1.79 or three fifty or something like that. So remember that. <clears throat> the third thing is, um, if it's two adults that are going on the cruise, um, pack two bottles of wine. Put one bottle of wine in one suitcase and one in the other. Uh, you may want to do this um, once you arrive in the port city that you're departing from, not necessarily before you get on the airplane. Uh, so when you get to, uh, say it's Fort Lauderdale you're departing from, just for an example, or Miami, you get there, uh, stop off at a, uh, at a, uh, a liquor store or a Walmart or, or a Costco and pick up a couple of bottles of wine there at a really good price and uh, put them in uh, two different suitcases. Also, if you're uh, looking for some, uh, you know, uh, Diet Coke or, or Red Bull drinks or, or other soft drinks, buy them as well before you get on the cruise and uh, stuff them in your luggage. Uh, you can bring that on board. It'll save you some money when you're on board. You won't have to buy a soft drink package and uh, you might avoid uh, the liquor package or the drink package that they're offering. Uh, uh, if you've got some wine already and, and you're gonna buy just a couple of beers uh, or mixed cocktail drinks, buy them uh, one at a time. Because remember, if you're on a, say, a seven day cruise, three or four days of that uh, seven days, you might be offshore anyway and uh, you're gonna be uh, on a tour. You won't have time to drink on the cruise ship. You might be at a beach uh, location, you'll buy some drinks there, um, save money. Okay, so that's a couple of things to worry about or think about before you get on the ship. Now, embarkation day, the day you arrive at the port, it's kind of hectic and exciting, lots going on, but it'll remind you of uh, sort of checking into an airport. You'll bring your bags and uh, your bags will be checked uh, just as you arrive at the uh, terminal. Uh, they'll they'll give you some tags, or you'll have tags pre-printed off of your uh, your cruise itinerary from your cruise line, even before you get to the uh, get to the uh, port. Um, and once you've dropped off your bags, uh, you, you might uh, you might or might not have a carry-on. Uh, my wife usually has a purse with her, and uh, I usually don't carry anything. And uh, you head into the terminal, and you get to the check-in counter, and there's staff along the way. They'll direct you where to go. Don't worry about being lost in this place. It's huge, but. Uh, You'll find it easy signage everywhere and people to direct you uh, exactly where to go. You'll get to the uh, check-in counter and you need your passports um, and uh, you need any kind of confirmation of your, of your cruise. Usually even on, on your phone, uh, your iPhone will work. Um, once they have your name and your confirmation number, it's all set. Um, they will run your credit card there uh, uh, as a pre-authorized credit card and they will then hand you back the credit card and your room key. And once you've got your room key, that is kind of like an onboard charge card. Um, it'll open your suite door, of course, but it'll also allow you to buy, a, say, a, a, a latte at the coffee bar, or uh, you can use it at the specialty restaurants, or uh, if you're, uh, gonna, you're thinking about going on, a, on an offshore um, uh, tour, you can use it at the tour desk or just charge it to your room. The, 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 the card is your identification. Uh, for charges on the ship. One little safety tip, um, the room card can also be used in the slot machines in the casino. So when you're on uh, on the high seas and the casino is open for business, uh, you don't have to bring cash into the casino. This is a cashless scenario. Take your room key, 
put it into the uh, slot machine and uh, you can charge the slot play uh, <laughs> right to your right to your room card. That's convenient, but also can be dangerous. So uh, keep that in mind. At the end of your cruise, by the way, if you've made money uh, and the casino owes you money, hopefully, thankfully, uh, then you just go to the casino counter and you can cash out. You show them your room key uh, and then they will, uh, they will uh, give you literally cash. Uh, uh, and then you can walk that cash right over to the, uh, to the uh, front desk uh, on the uh, ship and you can pay that cash back towards your room balance that you've charged up. So if you've taken out three or four or five hundred dollars to play the casino over the last week and you've got three hundred bucks in cash uh, from the casino at the end of it, you can go back to the uh, hotel desk, the, the, uh, the desk on the cruise ship, and you can put the three hundred dollar in three hundred dollars in cash towards your room uh, bill and pay that uh, casino debt down a little bit and the rest will be charged to your credit card and any other charges you have on board. So the key, your room key, is your onboard credit card. Uh, it also uh, is your ID for getting off and getting on the ship. Um, if you're taking, say, a Mexican cruise or a Caribbean cruise, you might be going to two or three different countries on that uh, Caribbean cruise. And uh, the passport that you uh, presented when you first checked in has already pre-cleared you into these countries. So uh, when you get off the ship in, say, uh, Jamaica, the Jamaican government already has pre-cleared you uh, for, uh, for uh, your excursion. When you come back onto the ship at the end of the day, you will have your card swiped by the, uh, by the ship staff right in the uh, security area there, right at the ramp when you board the ship, and they know that you have returned back to the ship. And that way, the ship knows, the cruise company knows, and the government of Jamaica in this case knows that all passengers who got off the ship have returned back onto the ship and there is no one left behind. Or there are, there are people left behind. And then they know who they are and uh, when, they depart, when they departed the ship and then they'll have to you know, figure out what to do with them. If you miss your ship, you miss your ship. Anyway, those are a couple of points right off the get-go. Um, once you've shown your passport, you probably won't need it for the rest of the cruise, um, unlikely. Um, but once you're on the ship now, you've, uh, you've cleared uh, the, the terminal and you're on board the, uh, the cruise ship, uh, the first thing I recommend you do, and the first thing I always do, explore the ship. Uh, my wife and I love to walk uh, the various levels of the decks, uh, see where the swimming pools are, see where the uh, the outdoor movie theater is, where are the hot tubs, uh, where are the restaurants, uh, the snack bars, uh, uh, what has the ship got to offer? And uh, it'll take you hours and it's fun. I mean, it's an exploratory uh, uh, deal. Uh, you won't see it all on the first day anyway, but it's a great way to get things started. And uh, take the tour. Uh, find out where the main dining room is because uh, uh, you may find that of the uh, seven nights uh, you're on board or so, three or four of those nights, you're, you might be having dinner in the main dining room. So find out where it is, and uh, if there are any staff members there, you can already reserve uh, a time, a specific time that you may want to have dinner every day. If you like having dinner at 5 or 5.30, you can reserve your 5, 5.30 seating um, for, the, for the days that you're on the, on the cruise. Um, and you'll get a peek at that night's menu already as well, because every day they post the menu in the morning for the entire for that evening, and you can see what's for dinner tonight. And that might help you decide whether you're even going to have dinner in the main dining room or not. You may find that the special they're offering that night uh, doesn't uh, suit your palate. You might want to take uh, the specialty restaurant, and you might go to the steakhouse, sort of the Chinese restaurant, or uh, um, you know the Italian restaurant, that type of thing. So check them all out. Find where they are and, uh, and see what, uh, what's available to you. Um, another thing I like to do on the first day is I like to take the spa tour. Uh, the spa is sometimes at the front of the ship, sometimes it's at the back of the ship. Find it where it is and take the spa tour. They love to show it off to you. They want you to get a massage when you're on board. They are hoping that uh, maybe your wife is going to get a, a manicure or get her hair done. Uh, they're going to try to upsell you on all their services. Uh, but take the tour and check it out. Uh, you'll be toured, given a tour of the exercise area where all the exercise machines are. That should be free for you to use on the cruise. They may sh show you an area or tell you uh, that you can use certain areas of the spa for free or they may uh, say to you, uh, you can have access to this spa area where uh, there's a private steam room area, a private sauna, private men's and a private women's uh, rest area with ceramic loungers and nice showers. And it might be, uh, say, a hundred bucks for the week for that access. Uh, I always take that deal. Um, I love the, uh, the, um, the idea of going into the spa. I get, uh, I get away from kids and uh, a lot of noise and it's quiet, it's adult time. Um, and uh, I really enjoy it. So uh, check that out and see for yourself and decide for yourself whether that works for you. Uh, keep in mind too, um, <clears throat> 
Cruise ships uh, sometimes will run a special in the spa. For instance, if the, uh, the, the cruise is in, say, uh, in port for the day, they might have a deal where they're, they've got a 30% off price on uh, massages today because of the 4,000 passengers, 3,500 of them got off the ship and are on tours. Uh, and there's only 500 passengers left, and the spa room uh, has these 20 attendants that have got nothing to do. And so they might offer a deal on uh, manicures or getting your hair done or having a massage, a couple's massage, massage uh, for, that, for that day. And you may want to decide, you know, I'm not going to go on that, uh, I'm not going to walk in, uh, in uh, and go to Cabo today. I'm going to stay on the ship instead, and I'm going to have a massage and um, steam bath and relax. Up to you. So check that out. It might be well worth your while. Um, other things to check out, uh, you want to check out the entertainment venues. Uh, find out where the big, big showroom is. That's the one where they, they can hold six, eight hundred, a thousand people at a time for the big Broadway shows. Find out what the schedule is for the shows as well. They may have four or five different shows on the cruise and uh, you may find that uh, the musical numbers doesn't, don't work for you, but the, uh, the comedy night does, you know, that type of thing. So uh, check that out and that'll help you schedule what your uh, activities are going to be in the evenings. Also find out uh, the local, all the bars on, on board. Uh, there might be a comedy club on board, a piano bar on board, uh, the, uh, the, the dancing, uh, the disco, you know, where, where the dancing is being held, uh, the night entertainment, karaoke bars are on board sometimes <clears throat> check it all out find out where the uh, the Irish bar is where the pubs are and you know explore and uh, this will give you a lot of uh, uh, ideas as to what you know what to do while you're on on your on board for the entire uh, ship uh, what else am I gonna tell you just uh, oh the muster tour that's the other thing you got to get ready for so when you're on board uh, when the ship is just leaving port they're gonna hold the muster tour and that's where you have to grab your um, your life jackets from your room so you'll have gone to your room uh, your bags will arrive eventually by the way uh, you'll go to your room you'll find your uh, your uh, life jackets uh, in your closet and uh, you have to bring them to a certain spot on the ship which uh, the staff will tell you uh, your card will show you as well what where your muster station is it might be one of the lounges it might be the main ballroom um, it might be um, uh, at the back of the ship the front of the ship you'll find that out uh, the, the staff will easily help you figure that out. Believe me, that's their job. And then once everyone is accounted for, for the muster drill, uh, you're free to go. And everybody basically heads back to the room, drops off their uh, life uh, preservers, and usually that's the time you unpack your bags. Um, uh, keep in mind, if you're boarding the ship around 1 in the afternoon and the ship is going to depart at uh, 4 or 4.30 or 5 o'clock, uh, the muster drill is, is probably around 4 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It takes about half an hour. You'll get all kinds of instructions on where to go in case of an emergency, what sounds to listen for for the alarm system, that type of thing. But then when you get back to your room, your bags will likely now be there. And uh, if you packed your wine already and you packed your cola in there, uh, you'll find them. Uh, pull them out. Uh, one thing to remember is uh, almost every suite on, on board these ships has a mini fridge, like a little mini bar fridge. And uh, there are, most cruise lines will have that fridge either full of beverages and snacks uh, and hope that you'll take them because they can charge you uh, premium money for it. You can request that your room steward clean out the fridge, take it right out and leave it empty. And you can use the fridge for your own drinks. So if you brought on board some Coke or, or, or some Pepsi or, or some Red Bull drinks or whatever you brought on board, you can put them in your fridge and use that as your own fridge. Another thing to remember too is you can tell your room steward that every morning you'd like a bucket of ice brought to your room say by 9 or 10 in the morning. And if you've brought uh, a couple of sport drink uh, mugs with you, which I highly recommend you do, uh, you'll fill them with ice, you'll put in a one, one or two cans of your favorite drink and carry that on board with you and you won't have to buy uh, pop on board at, at 2.25 a pop or something like that. Keep in mind that if you do buy a drink on board, the tip gratuity is already built into the price. You only need your room key to charge for it. So there are a number of occasions where you'll find that you don't want to bring a pop from your own room in a, in a big sport mug because you're going out to the restaurant and then you're going to walk on the, around the ship or whatever. So buy a cola at the restaurant. So what? Uh, you know, if you end up buying five or seven of them for the, for the entire cruise or 10, Big deal, no big deal. Uh, even at two twenty-five a piece, you do it. But the tips for the drinks and and that type of thing are already included in your in the price, so you don't have to worry about fumbling for change or what to tip the bartender. It's all it's all covered. Um, I think that's kind of the uh, the master. I'm just going to look at my list one more time here, and see if I've got everything figured out for you on what to do 
when you get in to your cruise ship. Oh yeah, last thing to remember is uh, every day, every day on your cruise, uh, you will get a newsletter delivered to your room. And the newsletter will tell you the port of call that you're coming to, or whether it's a sea day today, where in the cruise itinerary you are at the moment, that local time of day, the expected weather, um, and if you're going to a port of call, all the things you can do, a quick map perhaps of the region around the port, some rules and regs about what to know about the port or how to find a cab, that type of thing. <clears throat> and uh, all the activities that are on board the ship, the on onboard activities are going to be listed on this uh, newsletter. And it might be stuff like uh, tonight at 9 o'clock on the big movie theater outside where the swimming pool is, we're playing this movie uh, and it starts at nine and goes till you know 10 30 and then we have another movie at 11 o'clock until whatever uh what time bingo is uh, what the prizes are uh art shows uh, there might be guest lectures entertainment uh special effects or special events going on on the on board the ship that type of thing so the newsletter is a great thing to read and they're a great souvenir take them with you and it reminds you of your trip for years to come you can look over that uh, from time to time <clears throat> anyway there you are 10, uh, the top 10 tips for new cruisers. And uh, there are many more, but here's a bunch for you to think about to kind of get things started. And the rest you'll figure out as you go, don't worry. If you forget any of these things, uh, you forget to bring, you know, your Tylenol from home, or you didn't bring your toothpaste, or the, whatever, you can buy that on board, or you can buy it at a port of call. No big deal, uh, you'll, you'll be fine. Anyway, that's my cruise video for the day. Thanks for watching Traveling with Bruce. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you'd like to get uh, more of these videos. And uh, support us on Patreon. Check out my Patreon page and consider supporting me there too. Again, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.